Hi, my name is Anushka Basu. I study in Modern High School for Girls. Uh, so I have the TI Inspire calculator and I have been using it for like uh, one and a half years now and I use the calculator for academics so mainly I use it for like uh, the for my maths class but along with that I also use it for my science subjects like biology and chemistry and then um, the T this T the calculator TI Inspire it is very useful and it's very easy to handle so before I had the uh, before this calculator ti inspire i had the ti 84 plus ce uh, and with that which was also a very good calculator but after but after exposure to the uh, ti inspire solving sums have become really easier so like uh, some of the exclusive features of ti inspire are like are um, we can graph uh, voronoi diagrams which is a part of our ib syllabus and uh, which is not uh, I cannot draw those in in the TI 84 plus CE that that calculator, and then uh, graphing a function in this calculator it is very easier because I can just input the function and the graph is like it's readily drawn. But whereas um, in the TI 84 plus CE there were like numerous steps to just draw a graph, and doing statistical problems it is all that is all that are also very efficient because there is a specific feature for uh, of a spreadsheet in the calc in the ti inspire and the best feature i like about uh, ti inspire is that we can save uh, documents and have multiple pages open where we can do different questions or parts of the same question so like during our exams if there are like multiple parts to a question then we can simply like open different pages and have uh, solve them separately uh, then in it, so initially when I got the TI Inspire last year, I was very confused like what to use uh, for like specific functions and thought that along the sum and even thought that doing the sum manually would be easier for me. But after like attending many workshops and webinars by Texas Instrument, I am able to grab all the grasp all the functions and nuances of the calculator. So now I cannot do a complicated math problem like without the uh, TI Inspire. So it's been a really, it's this calculator is really helpful. Hello friends, this is Krish and with me there is my friend Abhay. And today we are gonna tell you something about our experience with the TI softwares and the handheld. So let's go. Our experience with the handheld and the TS softwares has been extremely wonderful till now and we genuinely love the software and the handheld and we are pretty sure that it's going to be way more amazing in the coming years too. Having the TS softwares and the handheld was really helpful for both of us because we literally use it each and every day when we do the calculations or even in other subjects to do stuff and uh, we are actually Love it to such an extent that I and Abhay actually created a YouTube channel called Crab GDC through which we actually want to pass on our knowledge about the TS software and the handle to our peers too. The first question is uh, how do we come to know about the GDC and TI softwares and the answer to that is that uh, Heritage actually required us to purchase the TI Inspire CX calculator. Uh, since it's a pretty useful tool employed by a lot of IB schools around the world and uh, the calculator does help people in most of the sciences and maths. So the second question is since when have we been using them and uh, since Krish and I chose international maths we started using it in 9th and we will continue to use it for the diploma program and for tests like the SAT new concepts and implementing it interactive methods of teaching so so i personally loved the ti because it helped me start out with modeling something that i now really like and it gave me a base for that concept uh, even though it can't do a lot of complex things it did spark an interest and it did help me build a base in that concept it's also uh, really great for subject tests like the sat and act and also good for iccse and Good evening everyone. I welcome you all for today's session which is hosted by Numerical Analytics Instruments Private Limited. 
Thank you all for joining with us where we are going to focus today on the topic sequence and series. So let me first introduce myself. My name is Swati and I am the trainer at Numerical Instruments Analytics Private Limited. Before moving ahead, let me first brief you about the company. Numerical Analytics is the leading provider of modern education technology and the analytical technology. Its presence in India is since 2008. The head office is in New Delhi and the main office is in Malaysia. Under the education technology, we are the sole distributors of Texas instruments across India. That includes the graphing calculators, the scientific calculators and the financial calculators. We work with many educational institutes, schools, colleges, universities across India. Along with TI calculators, we are also the distributors of science equipment like the probes and sensors of the vernier. All the vernier probes and sensors are compatible with TI calculators. Therefore, the calculator can also be used for science subjects as well. The other division of numerical analytics is the analytical technology, where we support the research analyst to avail the leading qualitative and the quantitative research softwares in India. These softwares are basically used in colleges, universities, etc. If I talk about our partners, our partners are the Texas Instruments for the Education Technology and the eViews and NVivo for Analytical Technology. We have been dealing with many IB and IGCSE schools across India. So I have brought you some of the schools over here because the list is really long. So let me just uh, have a look at some of the schools like the very old school, Kodai Canal International School, all the three branches of American Embassy School, uh, Chennai, Mumbai and Delhi are the users of TI for a very long time. The most reputed school in the uh, Mumbai, the Oberoi International School, the Heritage, the Pathways Group, the Indus International, and the Srinidhi, Navrachna, all are the users of Texas calculators. So uh, before moving to the calculator part, we will also have the Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. Also the webinar is recorded, so we will be sharing the recording of it with all our participants. Now, TI Inspire CX2. This is the latest version, latest technology. So let me talk about the keypad first. The layout of this calculator is, the, is, uh, is divided into three zones. The first one is the navigate zone. The second one is the math numeric zone. And the third one is the alpha numeric zone. So in the navigate zone, you have this navigate uh, navigation pad which helps you to navigate around the screen. And uh, if you see about the uh, keys, the key written in the blue, all are the secondary functions, which can be accessed in combination with this control key, the blue color control key. So this control key plays a very important role. So in this math numeric zone, we have some mathematical numbers, the numerical numbers and some mathematical keys you can see the trig key and all over and under the alphanumeric zone you have all the alphabets from A to Z and you also have some uh, keys which we will discuss. Also this calculator is kind of a laptop because you have many shortcut keys as you have it in the laptops. The first is the escape key, which helps you to come out from any existing field. The next is the tab key, which is very useful and used every now and then. It is used to move from one entry field to another. 
नेक्स्ट इज द कंट्रोल की एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द शिफ्ट की द डिलीट की हेल्प यू डिलीट द फंक्शन और एनी थिंग एंड द स्पेस पार सो ऑल दीज आर कंप्यूटर लाइक कीज दे फंक्शन एज द कंप्यूटर डज दिस कैलकुलेटर द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की इज द मेन्यू की द कैलकुलेटर इज कंप्लीटली अ मेन्यू ड्रिवन कैलकुलेटर Now, when when I talk about some of the buttons in this calculator, under the equal to under the control key, you have an equal to sign, and above equal to you have various keys. So all those keys are known as relational keys. So these these relational keys can be accessed in combination with control and equal to. So you have all the keys greater than, lesser than. equal to not equal to in everything beside this you have the trig key where you can see all the trigonometric uh, ratios and the inverses of it and then in the alpha numeric zone you have this pi key where you can see all the conversions in it iota infinity exponential degree radian gradient and everything here you have the punctuation key where all the punctuation marks are there and then this one beside the number 9 you have this very important key known as the math template key where you can see all the mathematical uh, templates like the matrices sigma um, summation integration differentiation logarithms and everything and beside this you have a catalog key which is again a very important key so in this catalog you can see all the functions that are there in this calculator so you can see all the functions along with the syntaxes of it for example i take my n solve so when i click on n solve you can also see what is the syntax exactly it has so in this you can uh, get all the uh, keys here so this was about um, some of the shortcuts and the keypad layout so let us explore the concept of sequence and series our today's topic by one of our t cube trainer mrs shraddha nayak so let me first welcome mrs shraddha nayak Mrs. Shadha Naik is currently heading the math department at Oberoi International School and is also an IB examiner. Previously, she has taught at American School of Bombay and in international schools in Japan and Malaysia. As an educator for over twenty years of experience in integrated math program, MYP, IGCSE. and ibdp her focus has now been on how mathematics is contextualized across the wider curriculum alongside students discrete mathematics learning she provides instructional leadership and supports curriculum enrichment she holds a master degree in science bombay universities and masters in secondary education New Jersey, USA. Uh, over to you, Miss Shraddha, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll share my screen. A warm welcome to all the participants. Um, and I will quickly start because we have a lot to discuss. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. So um, today we the focus is just on sequences and series. But through uh, this uh, workshop, you would be able to appreciate uh, how different applications can be used and how they are dynamically linked. Uh, so I'm going to uh, use examples across the curriculum, the AI curriculum and the AA curriculum. right for both standard level and the higher level um so just to, uh you uh, i i i want to let you know what i'm going to uh, demonstrate 
so these are uh, the the more important applications for this topic would be the calculator application the spreadsheet uh, the spreadsheet application and the graphs application and of course the finance solver which is really useful for the ai as well as the a especially for the ai sl students uh, so uh, let's get going so before i use some examples from the ib uh, uh, question papers or from exam style questions i'd like to first show you how this can be used these applications can be used so um this is a notes page all right i have i've had some notes for you so what are the kind of applications i'm going to use every time if you see here there will be i'm just going to scroll across i've got about seven or eight examples all right i want you to focus on the nomenclature how i've named it if you see there's a 2.1 there's a 3.1 there's a 3.2 and a 4.1 and so on right so all those that have these numbers the four that is a new problem all right there is a new problem if there is a new problem i've put it on a problem on a problem set and i'll explain that to you so you have two choices when you are adding uh, 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 either you can either add a page or a problem so my advice to you is that you if you're starting on a new problem you have to introduce a problem all right so i'll let you know where that is if you go on the doc so even before we start sequences and series this is something very fundamental for you to know if you go on the docs page right you have the insert and you have the choice of either the problem or the page so every problem that i'm going to show you is on a different problem uh which is just here on my on my tr all right and there are additional pages to every problem so what i mean is the 3.2 here if i want to escape now from this i use the escape so so the 3.2 is a link to the 3.1 all right and all work that i do in the three problems additional pages in the three will all be linked and you will be able to see what i mean in germany so i'm going back so that was important for you to understand uh so when we go back to my first thing here right i want to show you Uh, a few things that we can do on this calculator so i'm going to see if you see this is a problem which is problem 1 i want to add a page because i want to show you what these can be done so the way that you add the page all right if you see the plus page here i'm i'm just highlighting you know placing my cursor here the plus page everything with the blue need is controlled by the control key So, if you want to activate the plus page, you've got to press the control. So, I'm going to do the control plus page, and I have a choice of these applications. All right, I talked to you about the calculator application, the graph application, and the lists and the spreadsheet of uh, application. These are mainly that we are going to use. So, I want to first use the calculator operation. So, if I go here back, right, I want to show you some of these, and eventually through the work. shop you see all of these used and some more maybe so i'm going to the page that i added i want to show you something uh miss swati she discussed about uh, the math template and the catalog there is in the catalog there are several uh, commands that you can use i'm going to use the sequence commands so i'll show you what i mean all right so if you go down if you scroll here this is the catalog all the commands are housed in this under this uh catalog so if i go down and if you see uh, i have to go up a little bit because we are looking for sequence right these are the commands we are going to use essentially so you see the sequence and the sequence n if we have time i'll talk about the sequence generator so i'm interested in the sequence so what one thing you could is highlight on this one all right so if i'm going on here right you you see what is displayed at the bottom it gives you an insight into what has got to be entered if this has to be worked out you need the expression you need the variable that you're using and the low and the high so how many terms you want so let's go back i'm going to again so this is one of the ways to get to sequence i'm escaping this because i want to show you a different way of getting there you can even type 
you can even type uh, i'm just getting this out of the way yeah okay you can even type seq so i'm going to type seq it is uh, as good as going on to the catalog uh, and then as you saw the the command was to have an expression so let's say my expression is 2x minus 1 i'm going to start from something very basic all right if you know this this is the uh, 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 this is the command for the odd numbers and then i need to uh, define the variable i'm using the variable i'm using is x so i write in the x Com the comma is for how many terms you want to start i want to start from the first to the sixth term so i say first to six all right and i close the bracket and i press enter and you'll get a set of your odd numbers for the first six terms all right i could store this i could store this and i can do many different things so let me show you how to store it since these are odd numbers i think a good way for me to remember when i want to recall is storing it as odd so i'm going to write odd and if you see here the store again the store is controlled by the is by the control key so i say okay i want to store this um this has already been defined by me so just hold on i'm just going to delete this i'm just going to call it od because i've already when i was preparing the slides for you i've already defined you so right now i'm going to call it od and store it and what i can do is copy this here paste it here and okay so right so this has been stored all right already so what i'm going to do is is i'm going to find the sum of these uh, numbers so i'm going to write the sum all right and going to go to my variable it's already defined all right and i'm going to press enter and i get the sum this is one way to get the sum of these numbers uh what i could also do is i want to show you what the sequence n can do so i'm going to write the sequence all right and the n now this is an abbrevi abbreviated version where i don't have to use so many different parameters you know there's 2x minus 1 there is x there is 1 there is 6 so this is an abbreviated version a shorter version to get a sequence but this one uses only the variable n so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you i'm going to get the same thing using 2n minus 1 this time right and i'm going to say this is the because it is sequence n it assumes your variable is n so you do not have to specify n uh, it also assumes you want to start from the first term so all you have to do is write the number of terms and let's say i want five five terms and i press enter right now one of the other ways that you can because let me go back and okay some of the things that we discussed here all right i want to show you what the summation is so you go to the catalog uh you go to the math template and do you see the summation sign it helps you find the sum so i'm going to press this right i'm going to use this because you already we have already figured what the sum is for the first six terms so i want to show you how it can be done in a different way so i i use the 2x minus 1 right so the same sequence i could use any other sequence right and i'm going to say my x since i want to find the sum of the first six terms right go in here click in x and press enter and you still get the 36 right so finding sum of sequences can be done in different ways 
this is uh, uh, this this is uh, this is the best way you can do it because you just have to there's just one command you don't have to remember any other extra uh, uh, parameters that go with the command so this is this could be a some students may prefer to use the summation the sigma notation all right so now let me move on to some of the questions like what kind of examples would you see so let us try and do this one here right find the 20th term of the following sequence i'm going to focus from the arithmetic move on to the geometric then do a combination of arithmetic and geometric and then finally i will do the finance problems so let's say i want to find the 20th term of the sequence right so so the first so this is an arithmetic sequence because if you can see the first term is 5 and it has a common difference of plus 5 so one way you could do is define you have a formula booklet and you have all the formulae which is which are given you have the formulae for the arithmetic sequence the geometric sequence the sum of those sequences so you could use a formula booklet and the calculator to define right so what i'm going to do right now is find going to define the sequence and i'm going to say okay i'm going to use uh, s of n all right okay s of n and i'm going to define it and you will see why there are three questions uh that there may be different parts of the question and defining becomes really important at that time. So I'm going to show you different ways of doing it. So first I'm defining. So when I define my sequence here, right, I know you go back to this, you know, the first term is five and the common difference is five and I want to find the 20th term. So I'm going to define the first term is five. Okay. Plus and the difference is also five. I'm going to multiply it by n minus one. Now, what is the advantage of doing this? This is because you are using directly the formulae from your book, from your formula booklet, right? And when I define this, now, I, when I want to find the 20th term, all I have to do is write S. Now, do you see the difference? Here is where I have defined the S of n. And it has turned bold because it can recognize that it's already been registered. And I want to find the 20th term. So I do S of 20, right? And I press enter. And there I go, right? I could also find the sum. I could do different things because I have defined. And you'll see this examples. You'll see this technique used in the questions I'm going to do later. Let us go to the second part. It says the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence are eight, one, and negative six, and find the term that equals negative 258, right? So examples like this can be really, really solved. So I'm going to use the same technique, and I'm going to do here, and we're going to say, let me define this, all right? So if you see, the first term is eight, and the common difference is negative seven. The common difference is negative seven. So what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm going to define this. So I'm going to call it T because I have already used up S. You can use any of the variables here and define it as T of N again, right? You can define it. The first here going back, let's see. This is eight and this is uh, ne uh, negative seven. So I go back here and I say, okay, I'm going to define it as eight plus negative seven multiplied by n minus one. Okay, close the bracket, enter. There are several ways to do it. I'll show you some other way as well. And now I can n solve. So I can go here. I can go to n solve to the numerical solve. 
all right this solves and i can say okay my t of n okay go back to the question it says it is negative 258 so i'm going to say equals the equal sign is here and it is negative 258 okay i'm interested in finding the variable is n all right and i press enter and the answer is 39 so once you define there are several things you can do the calculator remembers uh, the parameters that you've set for it and you can solve alternatively i could have just written this i i need not have defined so i'm going to show you the same thing so go here we to go to algebra we go to numerical solve now one really cool thing about this calculator is i can go up and i can copy stuff from here right i can copy this stuff here okay so if i want to do this one here i can just copy it and paste it here so i'm not defining it but I'm still solving. So I can go here and copy it down here. So it's the same thing. I haven't defined it, but I have expressed it as an arithmetic sequence. And now I'm going to solve it and I still get 39. So there are several ways you can do it. Um, let's go to the third one. All right. Now, if the third term, so this is interesting because we are going to use still a different application, which is for simultaneous solving simultaneous equations. If the third term of an arithmetic sequence is four and the eighth term is negative 11. So you should know that you need to use a systems of equations where the third term is defined as a plus two D, right? So I am going to show you the use of a different, uh, function here so go to menu you go to algebra now you can also i could have also clicked three here to get to algebra for example now i want to solve a system of equations i can just click on two when i am on the algebra here right i'm on algebra so when i am on algebra i can click the solve a system of equations or alternatively i could have pressed two to get to this operation all right now the number of equations are two because your number of unknowns are two the first term a and the common difference d so my number of equations are two so that's good now to move between uh, these fields as miss swati if you remember miss swati had uh, uh, informed us that you should use the key tab okay so to move down you use tab i just want to show you how it moves in rotation all right and then i go down to tab and there is no need of expressing it in terms of x and y right i can use a and d because that is that brings me a sense of comfort at times because that is what you want to find so i can go back here i can change this and i can write a and instead of the y write d because a being the first term and d being the common difference and again i use my tab to say i'm okay with this right now if you see here i've got a system of equations all i have to do it was the third term so it was a plus 2d equals 4 i believe it was 4 right i can write i can go down and write so just want to make sure i read it correctly so the third term is four and the eighth term the eighth term will have seven differences added to the first term so i go back here and i say a plus seven d because it is the eighth term seven d equals equals it was negative 11. always remember you have to use this negative this is subtraction so this is negative 11 right and then i press enter and you have your first since you have your a the a is equal to 10 and the d is equal to negative 3 right so 
If you go back, I just want to revise the kind of applications that we used here. We used the sequence, the sequence generator, the sum and solve. We understood how to store variables. We still have to do uh, poly roots. We did the summation, that is the sigma notation. I'll show you how to do the fraction to decimal conversion. We've defined the sequences and we have used simultaneous equations. So I'm moving on, right? We are moving on. Okay, now if you see again, the 2.1 and the 2.2 are belonging to a same group. All right, I'm moving on to the 3.1. Anything I have defined in 2.2 stays with the two. You can still define in three, you can still use T of N again if you have to define a sequence. And that is the essential part, or that is a, a, a very distinguishing fact, a, a feature of TI. You can create problems and you can create pages. You can add pages to the problems, right? This is its unique feature. So you go to 3.1, we have a different question here. Now these are some of the questions that you would find in the IB question papers, very similar to those. Uh, this would be uh, a AI uh, uh, SL question. If you know the AI SL and the AI HL, they're subsets, which means some some uh, a, a part sixty hours of your uh, syllabi is going to be common between AI SL and the AI HL. So your questions will have components that are common to SL and HL, all right? So we go to question number one and we'll do this, all right? Now, uh, when I said defining a sequence is really, really useful, it is really useful in questions that have subparts because when you're once, you're once done with defining, you can use the same uh, feature over and over again for the three sub-questions. Right, so let's do this. Again, I'm going to add a page, all right? I'm going to add a page. I've already added a page here to show you, all right? Okay, since we have so much to cover, I've done this bit and I've shown you. So I'm going back to the question. It is 500 and the difference is 10. And if you see, A is 500, I've defined it as UN and I found, again, go back to the question, it says find the 25th term, and that is why I found the 25th term, it is 260. If I find, if I want to find the sum of the first 25 terms, we've done this, and that is why I'm, I just, I'm going to rush through this, there's so much to cover, right? And this is what I've shown you how to do this in the earlier question, and that is how you find the sum. Now, we've also used, uh, and solve, but this is different. So I want to I want to do this with you again, right? Okay. So look at the question. This is a different question. It says how many terms needed to be need to be added for the sum of the terms to become negative. So let's go back. Let's revisit this. So I've got this. I've done the and solve. All right. I've done the and solve, and uh, you know I I think I want to do this with you. So I'm going to kind of. Uh, you know, show you how to do it because there's a lot to it and that is why I'm going to, okay, so we are here. I'm going to redo with you so you get to understand, right? And this is what I have done. This is the sum, but now notice, I haven't written it as a negative, all right? I've written this at equal zero because your interest, you, are, you want to find, and this is the formula for sum. I want to remind you, this is the formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. All I have done is plugged in numbers. For example, all right, your first term is 500 and the formula is 2u1, which is two times 500. And I could have also written two times 500. It wouldn't have mattered, okay? Okay, I could have done that as well. Minus 10 is the difference. This is the formula which is given in your formula booklet, right? And I can't have a negative, like I can't write, it says less than, uh, it is negative. So I have want to find 
the term that when added will give me the first negative, right? And I try and do this, I get a zero, which is correct, right? If you put in, if you plug in n equals zero, of course, this is going to be zero. But there are two answers. If you notice, this is a quadratic. Okay, the sum of an arithmetic sequence is a quadratic expression. So you will get two answers. And this is one of the answers. All right. So how do I use n solve? So this is, again, I'm going to, as I told you, you can go back and you can, so I can and go up. So I'll show you what I mean. I can go up using this, right? And press enter. So it will be copied down. Now this time, I'm forcing the calculator to give me the answer. And I will explain to you what I mean by that. So it says, okay, given that n is greater, if you recall, Ms. Swati, she discussed about using the relational keys and I'm going to use relational keys. I'm going to say, oh, n has to be greater than zero because n is the number of terms. So n can't be negative. So one is zero. The answer to this expression is zero. What is the answer? So you are forcing the calculator to give you the answer. And that is why you get n equals 101. Now, the limitation of n solve is, if you're going, if you're going to solve, uh, uh, you're going to use n solve for a quadratic, it only gives you one answer. So here, the answer to this expression is there are two answers, there are two solutions. One is zero and the other is 101. So I used, I still used n solve and I said, now give me the other answer where I have uh, added a condition. I say n has got to be greater than zero. All right. Now, alternatively, what I could do is I can get the same thing using poly roots. Okay. So I will show you how to do that. You go to menu. You go to algebra. Now, when would you use poly roots? You'd use it to solve any equation that is higher than the linear. Since quadratic is higher than linear in terms of uh, uh, the degree. So I'm going to find the roots, all right? I say, okay, two, I'm doing the same thing. And again, we know that we have the real roots. Again, we use tab to move between fields. Okay, I say, okay, uh, I go back here and I say, okay. And it tells me to fill in the numbers. Now I've solved this earlier before uh, I could, um, so I solved, I saw, I've solved the n solve, the expression inside, and when I solved it, it was 505n minus 5n squared. So my a, a2 is negative 5. Okay. I move the tab. My n is 505. If, if you haven't understood, I will just explain in a bit. And the c is a 0. Okay. And I pray, pray, uh, press OK. Okay. So let me explain. I'm doing the same thing in a different way. So what I did was I have expanded this, the n over two times a thousand multiplied by thousand plus negative 10 multiplied to n minus one. I have expanded that to get this expression. It is negative five x squared plus 505 x, all right? So I'm, I'm still finding the number of terms now, when you use poly roots, you do not have an equation, you have an expression, you're solving for x. And I press enter and I still get zero and 101. I hope you made the connection. When you get n solve, you only get one answer at a time. And that is why I used the n solve, but I kind of nudged the calculator by giving an extra condition to get the second answer. But I could have done so. If you want to use, if you want to uh, solve for expre uh, for equations that are higher in degree than the linear, you've got to use poly roots. This is a quad quadratic equation, and I got the same answer uh, doing using poly roots. Okay. Now I want to check. I want to see if my answer is correct. How do I do that? Okay. So go back to the question. It said. How many terms are needed to be added for the sum of the terms to become negative? 
So if you need 101 terms, let's check if that sum gives me a negative answer. So I'm going to the math template. I'm using the sum and I'm saying, okay, the sum of this, which was, you go back up here, right? And this is what you're looking at, right? This is the, this is the expression. I'm going down. Right? And I'm saying N equals one. And I know it is 101, but I still want to check. It should give me a negative answer. So it is equal to zero. It gives you zero. Now let's go back up and get it again and say I want to find this 102 terms and you press enter and you get your negative answer. So the first 101 terms give you a sum of zero. When you do the sum of the, of the first 102 terms, you get your first negative sum. Let's go back to the question. How many terms need, it, need to be added for the sum of the terms to become negative? The answer is 102, right? I showed you the same thing in several different ways, right? So let's move on. You will notice it is a different question. I'm moving on to geometric sequences. And if you see, this is 4.1. The reason being, I want to be able to use different the, the uh, i want to be able to use the variables that defined functions once again so i don't get mixed up all right and it is really very easy so if you have if you are really struggling on a question you can move on to the fourth question and come back to the third later on so there are several advantages in having this distinct feature of being able to add a problem in a page so let's do this question all right consider a geometric sequence Find the smallest value of n, all right? Now, I told you we are going to use the graphing. Let's use the graphing for this one, all right? So if I have, I've graphed it. I'll take this opportunity to show you how to undo the page, all right? So I'm going to go back to the control. So I'm going to delete this page because I want to work on this page, right? But if I've, I've already defined u1, so it will not, uh, agree to it being redefined again. I want to also, the, the reason I've kept this page is because I want to show you how to delete some pages. So I go on to control and the, the up key, right? And if you see, I've got the arrangement. It was problem number four. I said, I want to delete this. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to problem one. And I'm going to problem one. And if you see, the 4.2 has been deleted. So I'm going to add a page. That was the whole reason I did this. So to add a page, you'll do control doc because it says plus page. All right. And this time I'm going to use the graphs. Let's re revisit the question again. It says, this is a geometric sequence. Find the smallest value of n, which is less than 10 raised to negative three, so one over thousand. So let's go here and let's do this problem. You can do this problem on the calculator app application as well, but I want to show you a different feature. So when you're in the graphing page, you go to the menu and the menu is the best thing on this calculator because it kind of responds to the kind, uh, to, the, to, to your requirement. Right now, because I'm in the graphing, if you see, it has got the menu which makes sense on the graphing page. I'd need the graphing entry, I'd need the window, I'd need to trace, I need to analyze, right? When we were on the uh, when we were in the calculator application, there was the algebra function where you had to solve or find roots. So this is kind of intuitive, right? It re it responds to the need and for that particular particular application. So in this case, I go to the graph, right? And since it is a sequence, now sequences are, are, are functions that have discrete numbers in their domain. And that is why I am going to do the sequence, right? I'm going to go to the sequence, right? 
and I can go, if you go tab up, Okay, and I'm going to define this now. I'm going to use this 18 times half raised to n minus one. So I'm going to do 18 multiplied by half. I could use the fraction. I'll take the opportunity to show you the fraction, right? And this is a half. I could have alternatively used a 0 0.5 and raised to n minus one, right, okay? And I'm going to graph now. This is a sequence and your n cannot be negative and your n, it, it, it is already defined for you. It, it, is, it will take uh, any values from one to 99. So I'm good, I'm going to graph this, all right? Now if you see, I really don't have any need. So this is the graphing, this is, this is the first, uh, this is the third term. If you see n equals one, it's still higher. We can't see the graph in its entirety or the more important bits of the graph. So I can adjust my window in several ways, right? I'm going to show you uh, a couple ways, all right? So I'm going to change the, scale, the, the values here and I double click to kind of highlight it and I say, oh, I know the n can't be negative, so to get a viewing, uh, 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 to get a good view, I'm still going to have a negative one here. If I want to move on to the next one, right, all I have to do is do tab. So tab is a really important key, it moves between fields. So I go to tab, if I'm interested in changing these values, you know, I'm going to do 25, and I tap again and I say, I want the first 20 terms. And I, I say, okay, this window is okay. So I press enter, right? So do you see the graph, right? This is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, and it's kind of defines for you. Okay, here it, it will define for you, right? Now, let's go back to the question. The question says, find the smallest value of n that is less than 10 raised to negative three. So I go back here. Several ways to do this again. Um, I'm going to go to menu. Again, it is a contextual menu. Okay, I'm going to trace. I want to find the, the coordinates of those terms. So I'm going to graph trace. And if you see, I can use my left keys and the right keys, the navigation keys to scroll left and right and to find the value, right? The u2, when, you, when n is equal to 2, the, term, the, the value of the term is 9. And I move to the right, 3 and 4.5, and move on. You've got to find a value that is less than 1 over 1,000, right? You might have noticed that this is a converging series, okay? The number, it never becomes 0. That is an important aspect of a converging series, all right? It tends to zero, it approaches zero in this particular example. And so when we are looking at the, uh, and you will also see the discrete values because it is only defined for integers, for positive integers, right? So I can move my navigational keys and I say, okay, yeah, but I still have difficulty in finding this, right? Like, okay, it's still, it is still, it is one over, so, when it comes to this, all right, I do want to point out that on your examination, you cannot use e raised to negative four. You've got to understand that the e here means it is 10 raised to negative four. So if you are confused, you say, okay, I do not know. It looks like it could be n equals 15 because it's 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.001, but I don't know if there are additional uh, values here. So I'm confused between 15 or 16. No worries. What we could do, we could open up a table here. So if I do control T, I get a table of values. And because I was confused whether it was 15 and 16, I can scroll down to those values 
Okay, I can scroll down to the values and check the actual values and say, okay, oh, this is still a little, uh, uh, the, it, 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 this one is farther away from 1000, but this is not the right answer because this is 0 0.001099. Well, this is smaller than 1000. So the answer is U16. I'm going to do the same thing in a different way. I could have used a calculator application. I also want to show you that. So what I'm going to do is add another page because it is the same problem. So I'm going to add another page by doing control doc. All right, and this time I'm adding a calculator. And I've already defined, if you see, this has been defined, right? This has been defined as U2N. So what I could do is I can go in this one and say, I want to find out, right, U2 of 15. You get the same thing, but I'm going to show you different ways to get it. And if you see, the U2 is defined, even if you define it on the graph, you do not have to define it on the calculator application. Uh, 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 you know, you just, only the calculator application will not take the, the defined values. You can also define it in all applications. So this one I had defined in the graph and I'm going to press enter and I get the value. Now I take this opportunity to show you how to convert the fraction to decimal. So if I do control enter, I, I get the decimal. All right, so I read the decimal. Now I do the U216. Now this is very important in IB exams. You have to show your working, you have to show how you have, come, uh, you have uh, finalized your answer or you have arrived at your answer as U16. So you got to show that U2 of 15 is 0 0.001099 and now I'm going to do U2 of 16 and press enter and this one again I'm doing control enter and I get the answer and that is why the answer is the 16 term because it is less than 1000. All right so we go back here and this was our question here right to find the sum of first n terms, you can still use because this is geometric. I'm going to go in here and I can, you know, do this again. And I, my n goes from one to uh, the first seven terms. So I'm going to go to seven and I'm going to write 0 0.5 times oh uh, sorry what was it it was 18 was it yeah it's 18 I, my i'm sorry just 18 multiplied by 0.5 raised to n minus 1 right and i press enter and this is the sum of your first seven terms. I'd shown you it works for the arithmetic. You can use it for the geometric as well. You could have also used the formula given in your formula booklet to find the sum. Let me go to the next question. All right. The first sum term of an infinite geometric sequence. Now, you know, for an infinite geometric sequence, it's got to be a converging. So the ratio has to lie between negative one and one. All right, and the sum of the finite sequence, the sum of the infinite sequence is 200, right? So we are going to use, uh, so if I have, since we are out of time, I'm just going to show you how I've done it, right? So it is an infinite geometric sequence. You have a, a, a special formula for the infinite uh, series, which gives you the sum to infinity, right? The sum of the infinite sequence. And that is why I've used this. If you see here, going up, right? And I've said the sum of infinity is four, which is the first term. Let's go back. The first term is four. And this is the formula. 1 minus r, u over 1 minus u, 1 over 1 minus r, and I have solved for r. So I've got, I've solved, I'm showing you the use of n solve. I figure out that it is 0 0.98, and I used to find 
I use the four, the first term, and the ratio that I found to find the sum of the first eight terms. All right. And now going to the next question. It said, find the least value of n for which the sum is greater than 163. If you see, I have used the n solve again. And I've used the sum formula because it says the sum of the first few terms you've got to find. It's not an infinite. It's for the finite sequence, right? I use the formula, solve for n, and that is how I have gotten 83.5. Again, I want to show you that I plugged it back to see which, is it 83 or is it 84? Does it lie between it? Because 83.5 cannot be the value of n since we are solving for n, n is an integer. And you might get confused whether it is 83 or 84. So I use the summation to check the answer. When n is equal to, when n is from one to 83, the sum equals 162. And, but when, the, uh, when you have the sum of the first 84 terms, the sum equals 163. So the answer is 84, all right? Let's move on to the next one, all right? I do not know if we have time for this. I want to show you, uh, uh, Ms. Swati, do we have time? Um, Ma'am, we can take for another five minutes and then maybe we can have Q&A session. Okay, all right. Do you want to have the Q&A session now and we can have a part two for sequences in series because there is a lot of uh, finance questions also left. So, yes, uh, yes, yes ma'am, that will be better. Yeah, okay, because I don't want to rush and it's, yeah. a, lot of, it's a lot of uh, things so this is a question which is a which is a integrated question of the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. There's a lot to it. So maybe I will take uh, the questions now. Hi guys, do you have questions for me? Uh, Ma'am, we have a question in Q&A. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the student is asking, can we do the graph question again? Sure. Which graph question? Uh, I think the previous one. Um, this one? Uh, yes, ma'am. I guess this one. Uh, we can also check with the students. Like if you have any doubts, you can raise your hands and we can unmute you. Yeah. I, I think you can, you can be more specific. If I, I can do this question again. Okay, if we are looking at this question. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to add, I'll show you how I, I will add a question. This is notes page and I want to use the same, uh, uh, possibly the same uh, um, defining parameters. So I don't want to get confused. So I'll show you how to add a problem. Okay, because we've shown you how to add a page. So I will do the same thing here and I will go to do the document. I will insert, this time I'm going to insert a problem. All right, I'm going to, because I have to, sh I, you, you would uh, not use the notes page as often as I do. All right, and I'm going to get this question. Now you see, I can still use, so I'm going to use here. Let us go back and if you are, you want the entire question, I can kind of just, you know, copy and paste is just so easy. Right? So let, let us do this, all right? So several ways you can do this. Let's say I want to do the graphing one, all right? And we'll do it with the calculator as well. So let me add. Now this is a new problem. I'm going to add pages to this problem. So the way that I do that is, Several ways to do it. I'll show you two and you can choose your uh, preferred one. You can go to doc, you can insert, and this time insert a page, all right? Uh, I want to get out of this, but I want to add a page directly from here. I can do control doc and I can add a page and this time I want to add a graph, all right? Now, since this is uh, not a, a, a continuous function, that means n for all real numbers, but just for n for integers. 
I, I want to graph the sequence. So I go to the menu uh, and I go to the graph entry, right? It is not a function, not a relation. It is a sequence. So I graph this sequence. And now I'm going to graph it. I'm going to do 18 multiplied by 0 0.5 raised to okay, n minus 1. That is the definition of the nth term of a geometric sequence. U1 times r raised to n minus 1. So you do n minus 1 and I press enter, right? This is not the screen that I'm really happy about. One way, I had shown you a different way. This time I'm going to show you a, a, just a simpler way. You click on here until you see, you, you get the grab. Do you see the hand? Okay, and I just grab and I just kind of adjust it to the place that I want. Okay. This is, this is one way. The other way I told you was to click on this and change these boundaries, the end values, change the end values, all right? And this way I'm, 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 I'm happy with this, all right? And you can still do this. I can still do the 20 or the 25 or whatever I, I wished, okay, all right? So this is your, your U1. You still can't see the U1. You, you, if you're interested in seeing the U1, I'm just going to make it 25. And now you see the U1, right? Now, since this is a graph, it has got a contextual menu that I was talking about earlier. You go to the menu and you want to trace the graph because you want to see these individual values. You graph trace, right? And you see, I'm graphing so I can use the navigation here and look at all the terms that I want to. This is the first term, the second, the third, the fourth. But my interest in is looking for the term that is less than a thousandth. Less than a thousandth. A thousandth is 0 0.001. I'm looking for a number that is less than 0 0.001. So I move on. I click in here and when I come to the 15th term, it says 0 0.01. Well, I need a number less than 0 0.01. So it is the 16th term, but I did show you how to use, how to be doubly sure or just be a little bit confident uh, uh, about your understanding of the question. So you can go to do control T. This gives you a table of values and you can scroll down and find the values. The same thing in a different representation. Do you see how dynamically linked all the, the, the operations are? Like I'm using the graph, but within a graph, I am using a table of values that is so informative, right? And look for your math IA, and you can represent the same information in so many different ways. So you go down, right? I scroll down, I scroll to the 15. Okay, the 15 is 0 0.001099. It's slightly higher than the 0 0.001 that I'm looking for. So this is the 16th term that is less than the thousandth that I was looking for. I showed you we can have the same information done on the calculator page, right? Since I've defined this, I'm going to add another page. And the last time I added it using the plus here, the control doc, this time I'm going to use the other way that I showed you. I'm going to insert, and this time insert a page. And I'm interested in the calculator application. And all these pages, this page and this page is, is linked together. Anything that you define here will be recognized by the calculator on its on the additional page that you create. And I have defined my sequence to be UN. So when I want to find, let's say I want to find the uh, 15th term. Of course, I want to find the 15th term because I'm interested. I'm just making uh, sure and several ways of uh, showing the same kind of information, representing, using different ways of representation is your communication criteria for IA. So, you know, this one, so you, the you defined in my earlier examples, no longer stay true for this, this problem. 
because this is a different problem. It's got its own you. So I press enter. Oh, because it was defined as U1, right? Not U. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do U. Okay, I'm going to do U1 because that is what the definition here on the graph here. Let me show you. Okay, it was U1, right? So the calculator is picky. You've got to be careful. And I want to find the 15th term. So this is the 15th term and I press enter and you would, you would, you would know because it's turned bold. So it's, it's recognized your, de your defined uh, sequence and I press enter, right? You get this value, the same that we got in the table. You can do, so what I can do, I don't have one to type. I can click here, press enter, just change this value to 16 and press enter, right? Now, you want, if you want it to be changed to a fraction, let's see if we can do that. You, you go to menu, you go to number, you say approximate to fraction and you press enter and this is it's approximated to a fraction. All right. Does it answer the question? It's almost 410. All right, I think we'll continue again, but if there are a quick, uh, there's a question that is really bothering someone, I'm happy to answer it. Hello? Excuse me? Uh, Miss Swati? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, we are here. Any students, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hands. So madam will answer for the questions. Yeah. We will unmute I'll you. One more question. I'll take one another question and uh, we can do this again another time. Um. If there are no questions, that's nothing to, you know, you, you, uh, you, you may think about it, gather all the questions that you have, and we'll be, I'll be happy to answer them another time you meet. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, students, for joining for the session today. Uh, thank you. For, uh, I hope it was a useful session. Uh, sequences and series is a topic that is uh, introduced uh, uh, in the initial few months uh, in most schools. So we thought, uh, you know, introducing this topic and also showcasing all, uh, well, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things that you can do with the calculator, but, uh, you know, exploring is part of the process of the learning process. So I'd encourage you to explore. Uh, uh, next time we can uh, give you ideas for uh, math IA, right? So you find this interesting. Uh, yeah, so stay happy and stay learning. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, for students, we just have uh, some important announcements that um, uh, we, uh, we are going to have series of webinars from next week onwards, uh, going deep into the subject. And this time uh, we have changed the timing from 4.30 to 3 o'clock. So many of them have not uh, uh, not able to join for the session today. So generally we used to share only the recorded the, um, the webinar link only with the participants. But this to share with the other students who are not able to join. Uh, but we got many, uh, many number of students have registered this time for this uh, topic. So we are going to do the series of webinars with uh, different topics, uh, part one, part two. Um, so please block your calendar from next week onwards, Saturdays. We will keep you informed about the timing. And um, like we have been doing this webinars for a long time. Like after this pandemic session, uh, pandemic crisis uh, started, we started doing this webinar continuously to train the students and teachers. And we got um, uh, no requests from these students that they wanted to learn the basics and fundamentals of the calculators. Uh, and uh, because now we started getting into this uh, topics, they wanted uh, to be we, we are planning to have this uh, basics and fundamentals of the calculator to become how uh, faster to work on the calculators and all. We are running a separate session. We have, we have created a workbook for, for it. If any of you wanted to join for the session, please approach us separately. Uh, Swati, can you show the email IDs and contact numbers in the screen so that they can uh, make a note of it? Yes, yes.
and i hope all the students who have joined for the session must be having the calculators in hand in case if you any of you are not having the calculators wanted to buy please approach us you can contact the contact numbers we have given and the email ids you can write to them and uh, any other support services like you wanted to download you want help in downloading the student software in your laptop or any technical issue with the calculators anything you can directly contact us or via school also you can contact us we will be uh, you know we will help the students and that's it uh, block your calendars from next week onwards every saturday we will keep you informed about the timing definitely it's going to be post lunch Mm, thank you so much thank you all